Well, good evening and welcome back. The Hayward Family Ministry is back after a long illness. As we pick up our King James Bibles and open up the book of Isaiah chapter 48 is where we left off. And it's been a while since Isaiah 47 to 48 to this time now. And the Bible says, Hear ye this, O house of Jacob. Okay. Context is the house of Jacob. Which are called by the name of Israel. This is written to the Jews. Of the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The nation of Israel. We got to learn who the scripture is written to. Because there are people who run the scripture and they, they quote the scripture. Hey, it's for me for a Christian. And actuality, it's not. And they are come forth out of the waters of Judah. And which swear by the name of the Lord, Jehovah. Those who have believed the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And make mention of the God of Israel. But not in truth. Nor in righteousness. They're using the name of God, but they're lying. And they're using the name of God. What's opposite of righteousness? Evil. Wicked. That's not good. And that's happened today. For they call themselves of the holy city. Does that sound familiar? we got to go to the holy city. And stay themselves upon the God of Israel. The Lord of hosts is his name. The host is Everything above, angels, seraphim, cherubims, man. I have declared the former things from the beginning. Now that's beyond your Ouija board. That's beyond the, the, the seance. That's beyond the palm reader. God has established forth what would happen in the ages to come from the ages that were. In pre-Genesis 1-1, I'm not talking about the gap there. I'm talking about eternity before Genesis 1-1. God knew there would be seven churches. God would knew there would be seven years of tribulation, <coughs> three and a half years of great tribulation. God knew there would be the Antichrist. God would know that there would be the great white throne judgment. God would know there would be people thrown off in the lake of fire that burns forever. God knew there would be a new heavens, new earth, and new Jerusalem. And God wrote that all in 66 books of the Bible, already the foreknowledge of God prior to Genesis 1-1. And all he had to do is wait for the men to come along, the inspiration say, Moses, write Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Matthew, write your gospel. Mark, write your gospel. Paul, write your epistles. But they've already been pre-written by the foreknowledge of God. No other God, no other prophet can do that. And they went forth, verse 3, out of my mouth, God's mouth, written. We have it today, written down. Things that God already knew, and I showed them. It came from God. Men wrote the Bible. Yeah, it came out of God's mouth. I did them suddenly. And they came to pass. Suddenly. <laughs> You know, even Paul was waiting for the rapture. God's long suffering, and to me, it's like, you know, God, you know, 5,000 years, and 1,000 years is one day. One day is 1,000 years with the Lord. And it came to pass. You know, a lot of the prophecies in the Bible is written as they've already happened by a God that knew they would already happen. Now, I'm going to the lung doctor tomorrow. I can't say I'm going to the lung doctor tomorrow. I got to say, Lord willing. You say, well, you got a one o'clock appointment. I don't know what's going to happen between now and then. God may have other, other plans. But God is affirmed and assured of his prophecy. And that's why God is God and I am not. That's why Allah is not God. 
Verse 4, because I knew that they are obstinate. And if you can see uh, online here, we got the 1828 Webster's Dictionary. We don't go run into Hebrew and the Greek. I'm going to take to you the English dictionary that we all would use. It means stubborn. And Jews are known to be stubborn. Even God says it. Even the Jewish people say it. And sometimes there are, you know, the Jewish people, they will get you angry. And you got to remember, you, you got to watch what you say, what you do, and everything about that Jew. Because they got that, I will curse them that curse you, and I will bless them that bless you. That's God speaking about his own people. And you know what the church age today is? You know what God says about us? We're wonderful and we're great. We're such a great, wonderful church. And what's God say about our church age? Blech. You make me vomit. Thy neck is an iron sinew. Thy brow, brass. You're just hard. You're just unbendable. I have even from the beginning declared it to thee. God has spoken to the nation of Israel from times past. The nation of Israel has been given the prophecies. And yet they've rejected them. The church age, today, we have given 66 books of the Bible. And what's the most common thing for a Christian? Well, I don't read that. I just read my Psalms. I only bring my Bible on, you know, Sunday, Sunday morning. And there are Christians today don't even bring their Bible. We're no better from the Jews, and Jews are no better from the Christian. We're both acting the same way towards God. Hard. My idol has done it. Giving credit for what God given to an idol. And my graven image and my molten image has commanded them. Listen, you go back to Exodus 20 from the very beginning, the top 10. Idols and imagery and all that. That's a no-no. That's God said, no, thou shalt not. And God even goes to the point to say that as far as the worship of images and idols, them that hate me. And you got the Catholic Church today. Oh, they're, they're aids to worship. And from Genesis to Revelation. It's a sin. But it's okay because we say it's an aid to worship. And the church has the same thing, same thing with graven images and molten images and idols. And it's in the form of Easter and Christmas. And it's, it's wonderful because we were out yesterday or the day before, I forget when it was, and we passed a pizza place and it, it was called... Um, Constantine's Pizza Place. I said, oh. I said, that'd be a good name for a lad to see in church age. Because you realize Constantine's what brought the Easter bunnies and the Easter and the pagan and the, and the Christmas festivals into the church age. But who knows church history anymore? Not the church. Surely not the pastors. Thou hast heard Israel. See all this. Will not ye declare it? You know what God told Israel? You've heard it. You know what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to declare it. Jesus is going all the world and preach the gospel. What? What gospel? The gospel that I believe. Listen, yesterday I celebrated 34 years. Uh, April 25th, 1987. I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. I believe the gospel. April 26th, I went out preaching Jesus and preaching about hell. You know what I'm doing right now? I am teaching you what God taught me through the Word of God, King James Bible, to help you to grow. What good for the to read and study the Bible for me and not try to do something to teach others to grow in Christ? I show thee new things from this time, even hidden things, and thou dost not know them. Listen, from the time that Israel was in Egypt and came out of Egypt under Moses through the Red Sea to now, they've been shown a lot of great things, wonderful great things, things that we've read and studied. And there are things like John says about the gospel. There are things not recorded that, you know, just 
You imagine if God wrote every single detail about Jesus alone? Man, I hate to carry that Bible around. Never mind what he's done to the nation of Israel. And let me, listen, I know they believe they don't believe Jesus is the Messiah. I know all that interesting things, and I pray for them. I support missionaries that go over there and, and witness to them. But God has showed them, they have heard, they're supposed to declare it. When was the last time a Jewish person came knocking on your door and say, hey, uh, let me show you the forthcoming of the Messiah? Now you got the Jehovah unwitnesses that come to your door. When Paul, a Jew, a Pharisee of the Pharisee, and, and great skill and knowledge of the scripture, when he learned of, of the Lord Jesus Christ and salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ, he couldn't shut up. And he didn't have a complete Bible. And we have a complete Bible, 66 books in the King James Bible, and the church is shut up to that. They are now creative not, and not from the beginning. Even before the day when thou heardst them not, least they should say, Behold, I knew them. Israel was not given the foreknowledge that God had given the foreknowledge. God gave a revelation to the prophets and to the apostles and to John, the book of Revelation, and to Paul. He gave them at the time that was prescribed by Paul, no earlier, no later. So Paul couldn't say, Look what I knew. Yea, thou heardest not. Yea, thou knowest not. Yea, look at that. Yea, yea, yea. That's what the devil said in Genesis 3. From, the time, from that time, thy ear was not open. What's he saying? The prophets preached. And they kept their ears closed. Listen, that is throughout the ministry of Jesus Christ. He often would say they have ears to hear, but they hear not. Even the disciples, Jesus would tell a parable, and they were, Jesus, what did that mean? And he would have to explain to them. And the times of Paul, he would be, and Peter says about Paul's right, they're hard to understand. <laughs> is he first or second Peter? For I knew, God knew that thou wouldest deal very treacherously, saying about Israel, and ha and was called a transgressor from the womb. <laughs> no life in the womb. God says, from that womb of Sarah, that womb from Rebecca, that womb from Rachel and Leah. All have sinned, come short of the glory of God. That's why Jesus Christ was virgin born. He wasn't a transgressor from the womb. He was virgin born. He was sinless. For my name's sake. You know what God's saying? I ain't making an oath. I'm swearing by Jehovah myself. I will not defer my anger. Now, if God is going to be angry, going to punish Israel, what do you think he's going to do to the Christians in the church age? He's going to love me, love me, take care of us. Then he would have to apologize to all the Jews in the captivity, all the Jews when Nebuchadnezzar come. He would have to apologize to all the Jews that would be under the Antichrist and tribulation period, because the tribulation period is a time of Jacob's trouble. It's the time that God's taking Israel over his knee and spanking them. Shall we not know that, the, uh, what does it say, that the judgment shall begin at the house of God? Something like that? I don't read the Old Testament. You better read the Old Testament. For my praise will I refrain from thee, that I cut thee not off. Now, in the Old Testament, if a Jew was cut off, and you'll find that in the law, cut off, cut off, cut off. That means you died and you went to hell. 
You didn't want to be cut off as a Jew in the Old Testament. Now, a Christian is never cut off. A Christian can sin. A Christian get God angry. And a Christian, and God say, okay, that's it. You're, you're dead. You still go to glory. Not so in the Old Testament. Behold, I have refrained thee. I mean, excuse me, I have refined thee, but not with silver. Money can't buy. I have chosen thee in a furnace of affliction. To make silver fine, you put it in a furnace. And God has threw out the Jewish history, and yet to come in the Antichrist, God is going to throw them through the fire. World War II under Adolf Hitler, it was literal when he put them into the crematoriums. Do you realize there was, a, there was a time in Europe that the air was filled with Jewish bodies that were cremated in the fires? There's a picture that, that, that circulates on Facebook, and every time I see it, I, I repost it. it. It's a wall, and in the wall, it's just scratches. And, and the, the bottom of that picture tells you this is the Jewish people scratching at the walls as they're about to get killed by the Nazis. And when you look at your fingernails, and you look at your fingers, they are making marks in cement. For my own sake, God speaking. Even for my own sake, doubling. That's a verily, verily. That's important. That's a, when God repeats himself, and when he especially repeats himself in the same scripture, Jesus would say, verily, verily. Important. Will I do it? Do what? Put you in that furnace of affliction. Why? They were given the law. The Gentiles weren't given the law. You guys, Naaman, a Syrian, I think he was Syrian, Gentile, was cleansed of his, his leprosy. And he had a little battle there between Elijah. And, but he finally, he went and dipped himself, and he got cleansed, and he runs to the prophet of God. He said, I'm going to give you everything. I'm going to give glory to God. And we run to the gospel, and we see a story. Jesus heals ten lepers, and nine go off, and one comes back praising them. For how should my name be polluted? Paul writes it. He says, as far as you Jews, you are polluting. You have soiled the name of God. You got this testimony. Your lives are making the name of God horrible amongst the Gentiles. And again, that's another top 10 commandment because he said, thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. Well, some people think that's a GD or Jesus Christ is a cut, but that's also what we're reading here. My name is being polluted. They are taking an oath of Jehovah and they're lying with their fingers crossed. And it's a it's a polka dotted lie. It's a pink little lie. And there's in the name of God, and God never spoke. In the name of Jehovah, God never spoke. That's happening in the pulpits worldwide today. God spoke to me. No, he didn't. I imagine when someone God spoke to me. I can imagine God's in heaven like, Michael? Did I say that? I know, I know I didn't say that. That's the same thing that was going on in Isaiah 48. That's the same thing going on with the Jews. And that's the same thing going on with the church age. So when we come to Jeremiah, Lord, will we get there? We're going to see the sins of Judah, and we're going to see the sins of the church, and we're going to see the sins of the Gentiles. Why should my name be polluted? You know, we're worried about water pollution, air pollution, and noise pollution. What about God's name being polluted? You ever think about that? You ever think about how much the name of God in the church is today? Never mind, though. I'm not talking about the unsaved people. I'm talking about people who profess to be saved in the assembly of a religion of a church. And how often is God's name polluted? I will not give my glory unto another. We got the greatest preacher. We got the greatest pastor. We got the greatest church. What happened to God? Oh, yeah, God. You're polluting the name of God. Hearken unto me, O Jacob in Israel. 
my call. Did you get that? The nation of Israel is God called. I am. That's important. Moses said, hey, God, what's your name? We've been talking about the name of God. What's your name, God? I am that I am. See it? Now watch this. I am the first. I am also the last. Do you recognize those words? Use those words for the Jehovah Witness. I will give you a little Greek. We're going to have a little Greek right now. Ready? I am the Alpha and Omega. 48.12 is God, Jehovah. And 48.12 is the Lord Jesus Christ, Scripture with Scripture. My hand. Who's seated at the right hand of the Father right now? Jesus Christ. Also has laid the foundation of the earth. The New Testament scriptures, the epistles, speak about Jesus Christ as the creator. My right hand. There's Jesus Christ. And I, I will go so far to say, every time you see God's right hand in the Old Testament, that's, that's Jesus Christ. That's where he is today. Has spanned the heavens. John chapter 1 says Jesus Christ is the creator. When I called them unto them, they stand together. All you that assemble yourselves. There you go. People that gather together. That's assemble. That's the church. All you assemble yourselves and hear. You know what God said when you get together in his name? You're supposed to listen. Which among them have declared these things. Which among them declare the thing? The Lord has loved him, Israel. He will do pleasure on Babylon, and his arm shall be upon the Chaldeans. The judgment's coming upon Israel. And what happens with the Babylonians and Chaldeans happens because God loves Israel, and they need to be chastised. I believe that's Hebrews 13. Hebrews. Book of Hebrew. You know who the Hebrews are. I, God, even I, God, have spoken, yea, I have called him. I have brought him. He shall make his way prosperous. Come ye near unto me, hear ye that. God says, come a little closer. I got something to say. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. God's not involved in secret sister or secret Santa Club. Now, he gave Paul mysteries. And again, at that time, when Paul's, okay, there's a mystery. Now I will reveal that mystery. But it's never a secret. From the time that was, past, there am I. And now the Lord God and his spirit, there's the Holy Spirit. So we just seen the Trinity. We seen Jesus, the Lord God, and the Spirit, capital S, has sent me Isaiah. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, capital R, the Holy One of Israel, not America. I am, there's that I am again. I am the Lord thy God. Well, God's all finished with Israel. Cow poop. If God's all finished with Israel and the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed me and redeemed me from my sins, if God is all finished with Israel, then God can be all finished with me. Am I not redeemed of God, the Lord Jesus Christ? Is not Israel redeemed? Does not that verse say Israel's redeemed? So if God can unredeem Israel, that some people say God's all finished with Israel, then God could be all finished with me. And friend, that's not possible. I am the Lord thy God which teaches thee to profit. And that's not P-R-O-P-H-E. That's a prophet that establishes a purpose. 
a reasoning and not so necessary a money profit, but for our benefit. Listen, God, it tells us to, to preach in season, out of season, rebuke, exhort for our profit, for our gaining, for our growth. Because guess what? For the Christian, spiritually and applying what we're reading, there is a profit. What is the profit? Gold, silver, and precious stones and crowns. And Jesus said, set thy afflictions on things above and not things on the earth. And too many Christians have got their desires on the earth. When they get to glory, they get to the judgment seat of Christ. And after the judgment seat of Christ, there's no profit. Which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Shouldest go. Why does God say shouldest? Because this is the way thou shouldest go and free will, you go somewhere else. Jesus said, I'm the way, but and they do follow him. Oh, that thou hast hearkened unto my commandments, and they didn't. We just read about idols and images. That's part of the top ten. We just read that they're taking the names, Lord, the name of the Lord in vain. That's part of the top ten. Israel said. In Exodus 21-22, to well, no, those chapters there, Moses, whatever, whatever the Lord speaks, whatever the Lord's voice is, we will do. Ooh. That's a mouthful, because then God added the law. Then had thy peace been as a river. Recognize it, the verse in the hymn. But when peace be as a river, he's talking about hearkening to the commandments. I hope that him is not about salvation. Now, as a Christian walk and a Christian character, all right, honor thy father and mother. I can't be saved by that. But listen, if I'm saved and I'm born again, and if I want to witness to my parents, I better honor them and treat them right. I better honor the, some of the things of the law that, you know, if I want to be a model Christian before my employer and my co-workers and my, where I live in church. Now, the commandments and the, of, the, of the law and that is not for salvation, but it tells me what God doesn't like and what God does like. I mean. There are people who got saved and they've got tattoos both before and after salvation. But God said, thou shalt not print any marks on you. God said, you know, I don't really like that. And then you go against the commandment. Oh, look at us. We've got a Christian tattoo. Why? It's a good testimony of Jesus. And when was the last time you told someone about the gospel of Jesus? Christ? Oh, I bring him to church. What's the commandment of Jesus? Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Do you want to ask 100% of the Christians today, 100%, and find out how many of them actually do that commandment? How about there's another command? John says you're to love the brethren. That's a commandment on this side of Calvary. And thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. What, what's that mean? Waves of the sea are just natural. They're natural. Thy seed also shall be as the sand, and that is promised throughout from even Jacob. I believe God tells Abraham the stars of the, of the, of the, of the, of the heavens. I believe that Jacob, he says, as the sand of the sea. But at least Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the stars and it's the sand of the sea. Friend, that is innumerable. Thy seed, your offspring, will be as the sea. You realize how many Hebrews there have been since Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the 12 tribes? There's been a lot. And there'll be more. 
There'll be a lot more in the millennium. And the offspring of thy bowels, which inside you, like gravel thereof. There's a lot. Up north, where I come from, Connecticut, we grow gravel. We grow rocks in Connecticut. We can we can take a, a family garden plot. We can dig up that ground, remove every rock, plant the garden, come back next year and dig, and there'll be more rocks. We grow rocks. I can do that. His name shall not. His name shall not. His name shall not have been cut off nor destroyed from before me. What are you going to do with people say when they're all done with Israel? If God is all finished with Israel, then salvation is all done by the redeemed. And Isaiah 48 verse 19 is a lie. And the Bible says it is, my God cannot lie, is unable to lie, and will never lie. You realize Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are right now standing before God the Father. Go ye forth to, of Babylon, flee from the Chaldeans with the voice of singing. Psalms writes about when they're in the Babylon, they, they hang their harps upon the uh, upon the whittles, and how can we sing the song of We're in misery, we're in dread, you know, we're we're in captivity. And Isaiah says, sing. Why? Because there'll be two men coming up named Ezra and Nehemiah. He's already written. Listen, the, cap the captivity of Babylon has not happened. That's going to happen during Jeremiah. God says, already come out of Babylon, come out of the Chaldeans. That's Ezra and Nehemiah. Declare ye, tell this, utter it even to the end of the earth. That's as far as, that's not just the known earth, that's all the earth. Say ye, the Lord has redeemed his servant Jacob. But I thought some people say God's all finished with. And to the earth. Do you realize a bunch of idiots in Utah say they're the new Israel and God's all finished with the Jew? And we're, we're, the, we're, you know, that rock went over to England and Jacob, we're blah, blah, and we're of Ephraim and all that nonsense. Nonsense. British Israelitism. And they thirsted not when he led them through the deserts. That's impossible. There is no water in the desert. He caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them. That rock, Paul says, is Christ. It's Jesus. He clayed the rock also. He broke that rock. Isaiah 53 is coming up. And the waters gushed out. You mean they took an iron spear and pierced his side and forth came with blood or water or water and blood? I forget what the order is. Do you not see Jesus Christ there? How is Israel, how is Jacob redeemed, verse 20, by that rock? I don't read the Old Testament. You just miss Jesus Christ. All right, now, if you don't want to believe in that rock, you don't want to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't want to do what God tells you to do. There is no peace, save the Lord, unto the wicked. While the world cries, peace, 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 peace. God said, hey, you're wicked? There is no peace. You know, you could be saved and wicked and you won't have the peace. Though peace is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And when Paul writes, he says, listen, the flesh envy is against the, the, the spirit. That, you know, the, the works of the flesh of murder, adultery and all that. And, and the fruits of the spirit is love, joy, peace. You can't have both. I know Christians try to, I know the churches try to, but you got to have a division. And the conclude Isaiah 48 talking to the Jew is, you're not living right. You're not listening to me. 
You've taken my name in vain. You got images, idolatry, and just idols. You know that's wrong. You're not listening to my commandments. I'm going to redeem you. I'm going to redeem you as a rock. Now, that's not present tense, Isaiah 48, because that's all the way back in the wilderness. And yet, the rock that Isaiah is speaking about, according to Paul, now, do you think Isaiah saw the Lord Jesus Christ? They'll say, oh, you know, they look forward to Calvary. You think Isaiah knew that Paul would say that that rock was Christ and followed him? Brethren, that's one of the mysteries. There's no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked.